Hello everybody. I am currently at my home in Italy and really wanted to touch base with those who are interested in painting in Photoshop. Um, the difference of brushes and the importance of brushes, especially for what it is you might be wanting to do in a photo painting in Photoshop. So I'm going to ask for you to forgive me about my voice. I've had a very extreme sinus infection for the last 10 days and I'm now just finally coming out of it and I really wanted to do this YouTube video for a while. So just bear with my really yucky sounding voice. So I'm just going to show you because I don't feel like most people understand the uses of these brushes nor how to apply specific ones for specific techniques, right? So for me, I really love this more, um, this technique that is more in, that is in traditional art that is more thicker, more opaque paint and more texturized, obvious brush strokes as opposed to, you know, you'll see a lot of people that paint in Photoshop and it's just very clean and blendy, blendy, and it's not really very obvious that it's a painting it just really looks like an overly retouched image so if I turn this off you can see what I've done here now painting with the more syrupy oil type of brushes will give you a lot more creative freedom especially to change different items in your photograph like fabric and dresses so if I put this back you can see that I've drastically altered the fabric of this dress and using this one particular brush that I have right now is for me one of my favorite ones to do now this one does result in some really beautiful more painting like oil strokes and it's very responsive now this one that I'm using right here is in my um, 2025 painting set and if I close this you'll see that I have no tool brushes, mixer brushes, hair fur brushes, drawing texture and special effects. This one in particular is just part of my no tool set and all that means is you can use any of these brushes for any tools in Photoshop and by that I mean a pattern stamp tool or a clone tool or a paint brush or a mixer brush or a smudge brush or you know pretty much any brush that you would ever use and they have no tool applied so it's just a larger freedom in what you want to do with it but this one is probably my favorite for a more um, oily stroke brush and this one that I'm using right here is my dry knife and so dry knives are typically, as you can see here, it's a flat, long brush. And so they, they don't really rotate very much. Like if you have the art stylus, if you move your hand like this, you can see that that will then move the direction. But if you don't, then you're going to get more of this up and down kind of stroke, right? And so what I typically do, I just find it easier than tilting my brush too much, is I'll rotate my image so that I can work in whatever direction I want to and not really worry about whether or not I have an art stylist. And I actually don't even know if they make them anymore. I think they were discontinuing them. So just rotate and you just hold your R key down and then you can turn it to whatever direction that you want, let it go, and then you're in. And when you want to turn it back, just hit the R key again. And that's your, your shortcut. So with this particular brush, I have my settings at 100% wet, 100% load, and around 65% flow. You can adjust those to suit. But I do really love this for getting those beautiful oil-like strokes in your painting. And there's so many different ways to use this brush and so many different more convenient ways to paint in Photoshop because of the layer format, right? So unlike traditional painting where you have to be very precise or you have to overpaint and paint over top, with layers you can always mask off certain portions of 
your brush if you perhaps didn't want a particular effect on skin per se. So let's just zoom in here. Now I prefer to have the big oily strokes so when I am doing skin like this I don't worry if I merge all of these colors into the skin portion. Um, if you're interested in learning in more detail how to paint in Photoshop I have a massive painting in Photoshop course up on my platform and I'll put a link in the description below and you will learn everything that you need to know about painting in Photoshop whether you want it to be realistic or you want more of these really thick beautiful painting type strokes okay so as far as a texture in fabric like this here there's specific ways to use this really dynamic brush to get really interesting painting looking effects. Okay. I do cover all of that in my course because there is a particular method to the madness that unless you know what you're doing, you probably won't end up with anything that you are madly in love with. So there are, you know, a bunch of learning curves in using these brushes as well. I apologize for my voice guys I know it's I've not had a voice literally for like four or five days okay so this is the oily knife dry flat brush so if I come in and I choose something like my painter canvas this one is highly texturized so again in working with those same settings I would get this kind of an effect so let's just zoom in so that you can see it. So now you can really see that this is going to add a really highly canvas texture to your painting. And this is nice to add just in spots. So you don't need this effect all over your entire painting. Maybe you just want this like here in the, the floral areas. And if you use it over top of areas that you use your dry knife or your more oily stroked type of a brush this really does add some really cool artistic very painting like effects so and again these are for any items or photos that you want to paint that are not just overly retouched looking but they actually do have an, a painting component to them right so that's my highly texturized and additionally if you wanted to make your brush a lot bigger and we zoom out then you're going to be able to see that that texture is going to actually be a lot stronger. So all you have to do is make your brush bigger and then you get a more impactful texture canvas texture but just keep in mind that the bigger you make your brush the bigger the canvas texture will appear so if you don't want it to be too overpowering you're going to want to keep it relatively small so that you maintain that texture realistic canvas texture effect okay so there's different brushes for all kinds of different painting in photoshop and if you wanted to perhaps work with a, ch a chalk a chalk brush like so then these brushes are a little bit more smoother they're gonna add kind of like a really pretty buttery flow to it so if you wanted to go over florals using the chalk brush you're gonna get something a lot softer and more blended and these are awesome for painting over top of florals if your your photograph has a lot of florals in it it's going to soften it and make it look way 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 more painted and blended but chalk brushes are awesome for just softening and making things look soft almost like a bokeh and then you could come over top with this particular brush and add that canvas texture which in part will again make it look so alternatively if you want to you could work on a blank layer and use this as a regular brush so let's go back and choose that one again and this time we're not in a mixer brush we're in a regular brush so let's sample this area we want it to be more in the purples 
So you could choose a more mid-tone color of purple. Right now the flow's at 80. I would pull this down. And this is just going to allow you to add in a bunch of overpainting. Okay, so overpainting around 50%. Now if I just kind of dab around these florals, like so. I'm going to actually pull this up closer to 80. So now you have the ability to, over top of your initial painting, just come in and add in some more colors into your painting that would be perhaps more painting-like. And you can change the colors and just add pops of that like so. And this is also another of many techniques that I teach on my platform. But here we're just adding some lighter kind of lavender colors to this little bouquet of flowers in here. And we maybe will add a little bit of a warmer color. So by adding in additional colors into this area that had some florals, it just makes it so much easier to come in and do your overpainting on various layers and then add into it with your actual brush used as a paint brush as well. So also if I wanted to add like some of this darker kind of green in here, I can add that in and this is called overpainting guys. So, you know, you are not stuck to just what appears in your photograph. This just kind of shows and teaches you how to use your imagination and get more depth and more artistic creativity out of using your paint brushes and learning to embellish your paintings with your own imagination as opposed to just, you know, following whatever you have in your photograph. And that's the power and the joy of doing Photoshop painting is that yes, okay, you're starting with a photograph, but you can come in and overpaint and really add to your original photograph and create more of a painting. I just find it really becomes so helpful with the overall outcome of what it is that you're trying to do with your paintings like don't get stuck with oh well this is all that's in my photograph so this is pretty much what I have to work with no like the only thing you're limited to is your imagination so now if I do this here's my overpainting I can add another layer over top of it go back to my mixer brush and my mixer brush still has the chalk brush that I was using but now it's a mixer brush so it's going to have a totally different effect right I just want to make sure if you're working on a transparent layer that your all sample layers is included and now if we zoom in and make our brush a bit smaller now you're going to affect all of that over painting that you did using the same brush but now instead of it adding just textured colors to your painting you're actually using it as a mixer brush and it's looking more painting painting like okay and it's just one of oh so many things that you can do using Photoshop paint brushes now I probably should have waited to do this for another week until my voice was completely repaired but I've been putting this off now for so long and I just wanted to get it out so Again, my deepest apologies for my sick voice. Sounds like crap. So I just wanted to show you, you know, a couple of really super quick techniques when you're considering beginning or expanding your ability and your talent in painting in Photoshop. And yeah, so these are just a couple a couple 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 brushes out of this re most recent set that I released and this also um, is the set that came with the Photoshop Summit that I taught in um, the spring and it's now available on my website in my store as well so 
go ahead and grab yours link will be down in the description below and I will continue to add little painting tips and tricks to my YouTube but if you want to learn the full in-depth way to learn how to seriously paint in Photoshop then head over to my platform and I will talk to you guys soon